The blocking rule can be challenging to understand. I suggest you have your rule book open to that rule when we look at blocking examples in this segment. Now here goes an explanation. A side may block an opponent from making their wicket, that is, putting a dead ball in the path of an opponent's possible shot at the wicket. We'll discuss what a possible shot is shortly. But if you block that same ball in its next turn, the blocked ball becomes alive on all dead balls that are blocking its path to score the wicket. The thing that's tricky about the blocking rule is you have to know who is responsible for the position of each pertinent ball in addition to knowing the chronology of how each ball got there. You'll see the word thereafter in this rule. This is an important word to help you better understand this rule. It's important to know that you must verbally acknowledge that you feel you are blocked and then either have the opponent agree and if they don't bring a referee out. And then if this happens a second time, again, you have to verbally state that you feel you are blocked. You just can't hold it in yourself and uh, then have a referee rule. You have to declare verbally. Before we get into those blocking examples, let's look at what a possible shot at a wicket really is. Diagram 1 shows red has a very extreme angle shot at the wicket. The two white dots are representing the uprights of the wicket. Let's see if this is a possible shot. One thing I need to add, a possible shot must be one that is not a jump shot. It has to be a shot, just a conventional shot at a wicket. No jump shot. In diagram 2, we see the same image, except now there is a little black mark on the right hand upright, what would normally be termed the far upright for red, with the left dot being the near upright. The black mark is technically known as the tangent, or the nearest point of the far upright to the red ball. For a ball to have a possible shot, it must just miss the near upright and have its center hit to the left of the tangent. Diagram 3 shows where red would be if it just missed the near upright. The blue line shows the forward direction of red, which is clearly to the left of the tangent, and therefore this is a possible shot. As a comparison, the white line shows the direction red would have taken if it hit the tangent, which would not be a makeable shot. Diagram 4 shows red in a new and much more difficult position to score the wicket. Diagram 5 confirms this is not a possible shot. Red, just missing the near upright, has its center going to the right of the tangent. Diagram 6 gives you an idea of how a referee on the court would verify whether a ball has a possible shot. The idea is for the referee to stand in a position where they can see the tiniest distance of space between the ball and the near upright, and then look through the wicket to see if you can see more than half the ball. In this case, you can see more than half the ball. Another way to interpret this is you see less than half the ball to the viewer's left of red's far upright. Diagram 7 shows a shot that is not possible. You see less than half the ball through the wicket and more than half the ball to the left of the far upright. Just a few final comments and thoughts before we see 10 blocking examples. With black dead on red, this diagram shows that red is blocking black from scoring the wicket. You can see that black is contacting red before scoring the wicket. Red would need to be in this position to not be blocking black. Here you can see that black is not protruding through the plane side of the wicket, which means black has scored the wicket. This is the test to know whether red is blocking black when red is on the non-plane side of the wicket. This diagram shows that red, the striker ball, is blocked by black due to black hampering red's normal backswing. You would test a player's normal backswing before granting this a block. To be blocked, you don't have to be close to the wicket. In fact, you can be blocked from several yards away. Blocking has nothing to do with the probability of making a wicket, just the possibility of making it. When a referee is called to rule on a block, they must confirm which ball is to play. 
it must be the ball requesting the block's turn. You must ask who is responsible for each ball's position and confirm the striker's deadness. In the following examples, you'll see text describing the situation and the ball positions. I suggest pausing each one to study it and make your ruling. Following each example is the answer and explanation as it relates to the wording in the rulebook. Please note in each of these 10 examples you're about to see that the deadness board only reflects red deadness. We didn't want to bother you with any other ball's deadness. It doesn't matter in the examples you're going to be judging. I think you'll find you may need to view this video several times to get a good grasp of the blocking rule.